Greetings and salutations, uh, Twitch stream goers. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I'd like to thank you for joining me once again this evening for another installment of my Pokemon Soul Silver Nuzlocke run. I've had a lot of things interrupt my opening speech on this here channel. Very seldomly has it been a really irritating back scratch that I had to adjust to at that very moment. Uh, you can catch the show you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST. And when you're done with that, you can catch up on all my previous broadcasts on YouTube where they publish as VODs every Wednesday and Saturday. Without further ado... Let's go ahead and let's jump right back into Pokemon Soul Silver, uh, where we last left off. We had decided to go and explore uh, as much of the Johto region as we possibly could uh, with our current capabilities. So we made it all the way to Aldevine City. I got to be honest, I feel a little bit bummed out that we didn't have uh, Fly when we decided to embark on this big trek because I feel like Fly would have really come in useful. Um, one thing that we kind of considered as we were walking through the many regions of Johto is that we could take the opportunity to actually uh, capture a Pokemon with our old rod. And that one Pokemon, of course, is Magikarp. Magikarp evolves into Gyarados, and when it evolves into Gyarados, it actually gains access to Bite, which is actually super effective against Morty's Ghost-type Pokemon. Oh, wow. Can we already... We can already take on the Price? Oh, no, wait. Jasmine. Okay, okay. So you can't really enter it here yet this is the sixth gym of course all right um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna see we um are allowed to catch one pokemon per route and that includes cities so i want to see if i could potentially fish myself a pokemon from the sea in olivine city if i can't that's okay Okay, there we go. It'd be really funny if it actually was not a Magikarp. Well, it's level 10. That's not bad. I was concerned it was going to be like level 5, but that's okay. Still going to have to do some grinding, though. Uh, you'll be pleased to know that I have a fully sacked dinner uh, for tonight's stream, by the way. Uh, I have on hand uh, a nice big baked potato. Uh, a couple of things of roast beef uh, covered in gravy and, as you can see, quite a bit of corn. Uh, yeah. So I hope you don't mind if I indulge in a little bit of that. Dinner always is a little bit late to get going here in the Kazina household, so... Try to go with an, a great ball just to see if we can cinch this really quickly. There we go. All right. What are we gonna call Magic Art? Hmm. I'm trying to think. What's like a, a fishy cereal? I'm sure there's probably been like a Swedish fish flavored cereal, but I feel like we can do a little bit better than that. Oh, they had a Finding Dory cereal from 2016. Hmm. We also have to consider, though, that we probably... We probably want to name it something that also, like, corresponds to... Um, what is it? Like, the fact that it's going to evolve into such a, like, powerful, majestic Gyarados. Hmm. Looking through some of these things, or do I want to call it something honey themed? I don't know. I don't feel like I can. I feel like I can do better than that. Ooh, lion cereal. Yeah, that'd be great if it was an actual lion, but it's not. Oh, Oreo O's. You know what? 
because both Magikarp and Gyarados are making O faces with their mouths, I think, ladies and gentlemen, we have the name that we're going to be nicknaming him. Give me just a quick little second. And there we go. Now the question is, who is going to be kicked out of our party so that we can make room for Oreo O's? Hmm. Let's go back. Uh, let's see. I mean, I guess it's probably going to have to be that female uh, shiny Nidoran that I caught last time, right? That would probably make the most sense. Yeah, because everyone else in the party... Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, no, this is the entire party. Oh. Oh, dear. Ah. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. I will say this. Nidorina is probably the least viable Pokemon for the upcoming gym battle that we have ahead of our, us, but Nidorina also will eventually evolve into a pretty tough cookie in the form of Nidoqueen, so I, I feel a little bit bad about writing it out, you know, right now. I feel like... <clears throat> Stantler also... Stantler definitely will be useful in the upcoming gym battle, because at least he'll be <clears throat> immune to my opponent's ghost-type moves. Quilava, he's staying in. I feel like it's gotta be maybe one of the two grass-type Pokémon. The problem is, is that Weeping Bell... Uh, or, uh, the thing is, Weeping Bell is, like, resistant towards, uh, the Poison-type moves that he might potentially use, but Skiploom, uh, on the other hand, is gonna evolve a little bit sooner. Hmm... I, I should probably honestly look up when we're gonna get- you know what? Because we used Weeping Bell a lot during our Pokémon Leaf Green run, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swap him out for Magikarp, but I will- Definitely keep him in mind. I'm definitely not going to forget about him. Now, I gotta check. Do we have an experience share on hand? Hold on, it wouldn't be here. Hmm. I should probably look up where to get the experience share in this game. I mean, I'm, I'm fine just, like, sending my Magikarp out first in battle to gain experience points, but, like, I feel like we can do better. That everybody is having a good evening tonight. It's been a pretty solid day. I got a nice entire kind of, like, eight-ish, seven-ish hours of sleep last night, and so I'm feeling pretty good. and it's only level 17. Okay, okay. Um, I guess I could send in Very Berry to take care of this one. Okay, so it seems like what I'm reading right here and right now is that it seems like I need to complete um the Lake of Rage quest in order to get the experience to share. So a little... Uh, we have a little ways to go. I feel bad, because we're probably going to get pretty badly paralyzed from attacking Pikachu all these times, but you got to do it. I probably should have actually healed up my party at the Pokemon Center just once more before I headed out again. It's all right, though. And there we go, nice level up.
Mm. I find I find magic harps like a little like uh, animation flopping behind you to be pretty cute. He's a good boy. Curious. How much experience points did Oreo O's get from that previous one? Okay, not a lot. I'm beginning to wonder. Brave nature, though. Not not a bad nature at all. I'm beginning to wonder if actually, if if it, it is going to take that long to get the experience share, if maybe we should hold off on using that and instead level up Weeping Bell a little bit. At some point, like, one of my Pokémon's gonna get real badly paralyzed from doing that, but somehow not yet, which is amazing. All right. Hell yes! Oh, hold on. Some dude called Irwin, who I definitely don't remember. Oh, he wanted to congratulate me for the Whitney victory. Thank you. I definitely way over prepared for that, if I got to be honest with you. If, if Magikarp had an attacking move, I might go for this one, but I don't think I can do so. Good job, Apple Jacks. Hmm. I know who can handle this guy. Oh no. Oof. There, there's no way I could have anticipated that, so... I think that's just bad luck. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> I'm pretty certain that Krabby does not have Pursuit, so I'm okay sending him back in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, can, I guess I can use Apple Jacks again. Mm. Oh, wow. Perfect. Excuse me. It, it's moves like Bullet Seed that the speed up exists for, to be honest. There we go. Uh, I gotta be honest, I got real nervous for a second there when Pursuit very nearly killed Magikarp. So you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna head back into town real quick. I know we're, we're moving at a bit of a gl glacial pace, but just bear with it. Gonna heal ourselves up. I'm gonna heal a little bit with some of the wild Pokemon. Gonna get Magikarp to a little bit of a higher level so that he's not as flimsily taken down by whatever walks in front of his path.
All right, let's go. Uh, here we go. Another Pokemon that has Pursuit. Uh, maybe we shouldn't actually train in these here grasses. Uh, here we go. Well, he didn't use Pursuit this time, so it's not that bad, but... <clears throat> there we go. I'll just do a little bit more, and then we'll move on. Man, we almost caught a Meowth for our team had that one attack not accidentally been, like, a critical hit. That was really too bad. Not that I would have really used Meowth, but Meowth, not exactly a Pokémon that I feel like I often use a lot on these runs. It would have been nice to use him, you know? Get him to level 13 and then we'll move on to the other trainers. Alright, again. I do think there is some funny. There's definitely some funny irony to how this route is inhabited by giant rats and small cats. That must have been like an intentional decision on the part of the developers to have it be, like, exclusively Raticates and Meowths. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna run back to the Pokémon Center after this and just head on to the rest of the route. No need to bother with training against wild Pokémon any longer. Uh, that being said, I will make a point of switching He's like to the front of the party just so that we can give our team a little bit more breathing room. We really, like, <clears throat> man, we really lucked out on getting a Stantler that knows Intimidate. Stantler, like, he's not the strongest Pokemon in the world. Like, he's definitely a Pokemon that needed an evolution, and I'm glad that we got Weird Deer in, you know, Pokemon Legends Arceus, but... He's pretty decently powerful on his own, and Intimidate makes him into a genuine bona fide threat. That move will singularly like carry him throughout the entire game. Here we go. Probably a Psychic and or uh, Ghost State Pokemon, which definitely don't know Pursuit on average. Oh, I put the wrong Pokemon at the front of my party. It's all right. I gotta say, I'm a little bit surprised. I thought that the way that Shell Bell would work would be that I would get healed a little bit every single time that moves like Bold Seed would hit, but it's not how it's actually working. Come on. Oh, 
one more hit and I'll manage this. And hopefully, hopefully Slowpoke isn't about to use Headbutt or something on me. Uh, I might not actually do it. Crap. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Slowpoke isn't about to pull anything super serious out of his ass. There we go. Just at the very end. those levels ups. Look at them go. This is the mill tank farm that we stopped by a little bit earlier. They, they explain that you need to do something, you need to bring them something to help the mill tank recover, but I don't remember <laughs> what it was exactly. Oh, look at this. We have an item that we can potentially get. Wait, how do we get the item? Do we... can we... Oh, that is very odd. I don't know how you get that item at all. Oh, Magnemite. I would have really liked to have gotten this guy. Um... Hold on, I'm, I'll have Special K take care of this. Special K not, has not done a whole lot since the start of the stream. Let's give him a, a shot to do something. Come on. Come on. Oh my god, Special K, come on! There we go. You know, because we have overshot a lot of these gym leaders, once we get back to that horribly hard to pronounce city that the gym leader lives in, we will definitely just check out and see how tough some of the preliminary trainers in this gym are, because if they're not that bad, I might as well see if I can go for it. That's a big piece of meat. Um, we we encountered a Tauros uh, during my previous um, Nuzlocke stream, and at the time I remarked, like, man, as much as I am enjoying having Mooselix on my team, I would have enjoyed having Tauros even more. Tauros is like a bona fide powerhouse.
Excuse me. Ugh. Sign of the good meal. Of course. I also have a Snacks and Corazion segment coming up sooner rather than later, so you can definitely look forward to that. Uh, speaking of Pokemon I want to capture, uh, I definitely am glad I did not encounter a Farfetch on this route, because my team already has enough Pokemon that are flying type as is. Here we go. A little bit more and he'll be able to level up, and when he does so, he'll be able to learn Tackle, which will definitely give him just enough of it, an advantage in battle to be ever so slightly useful if we ever need him to actually battle himself. Ooh. Doduo. First time that we've encountered him in this run? No, I feel like we encountered him once before. All right. Let's give Count Chocula a chance to shine. I feel like he hasn't been able to do much. Oh, look at that, he's about to level up too. Perfect. Man, poor Daduo. He's a bird, can't even use wing attack. I'm a bat, and you better believe I most definitely can use wing attack. And there goes Dottimo. Oh shit! Oh shit! Ladies and gentlemen, your boy Skullbat is about to have an early evolution. Now this right here, this right here is what you call kismet. Everything is just working out perfectly. Look at that beautiful sprite. Look at that beautiful sprite. You beautiful, sexy man. I'm gonna remove the Soothe Bell because he no longer needs it, and I am gonna give him... I actually don't know what I should give him. Yeah, there's something I can give him right now. Alright, well, I'll just keep him as is. Uh... Wow. Can't believe we actually got this to work. Look at this man. Look at this boy. And with that, he's now the Pokemon on the team with the strongest attack stat of anyone at the moment. Which is not actually that considerable of a leap compared to some of my other allies. Um, because, I mean, he doesn't have, like, the strongest base attack stat to begin with, but hey. Not bad at all, Crobat. You really proved your mettle. It really was so, so arduous to level you up when you were a Zubat, but now, now it's smooth sailing ahead. Cool. 
Let's see, I bet with like a battle or two, I'll be able to level up to level 15. I'm gonna send out Muselix for this one. Oh no, shit. I might be in trouble. Okay, I'm not in trouble, but I am gonna be as cautious as I possibly can be and switch out to a healthier candidate. Of course, I do also have potions that I can use at a moment's notice. Laffy. Interesting. Um, let's send out Applejacks. Oh, you paralyzed me? Let me paralyze you back. Uh, God damn it. Here we go. This is actually the first time in quite some time during this run where I've actually even had to use synthesis. <laughs> I'm glad I have it. Do that? That's fucking illegal. All right, here we go. Heal ourselves again. Hopefully, she doesn't have another moo moo milk up her sleeve. Here we go, there we go! Ladies and gentlemen, our first Flaffy is defeated. Hell yeah. Welcome to a whole new world, Oreo O's. I'll... I'll... Set off a tackle to see how strong it is, and then I'll switch out. Ooh, that's not strong at all. On the other hand, that is pretty strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch... You know, let's switch to Count Chocula. Let's give him a whirl. Wow, I, I was not expecting him to resist that attack that well. That I, I got a little bit nervous for a second there when I saw him using confusion, but I guess things worked out just okay. Ugh. Our team is pretty dinged up at this point. I should probably head back to town to heal, if I gotta be honest. Well, fuck, I did not think... I thought that was a shortcut out of here, but it was definitely not. In fact, he actually blocked my way out, so yeah, this is not great. Uh, Mr. Mine. I don't know. Okay.
I'm gonna switch into Apple Jacks just so that I can heal up Quilava. There we go, perfect. Didn't do a lot of damage, which is just what we wanted. I always get a little bit nervous when I see my opponents using stat boosting moves, but a Mr. Mime using Meditate? Really? What, what are you trying to do? I, I mean, to be fair, he does have double slap, but like you weren't very strong at it to begin with. Also, you're, you're, you're wasting your opportunity to retaliate, so. And with that, you are defeated. Uh, mother's here to tell me about how she bought me some more rare berries. <clears throat> no, 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 I didn't mean to call her back. Where do we want to go next? Right, back to the Pokemon Center. Unfortunately, we still don't have Fly on hand, so we kind of got to trek it on foot. Ooh, that uh, Miltank, this guy will actually yield uh, a lot of experience points for us if we defeat him, so I'm going to send out Special K. One last rock. Mill tank. Ah, come on, come on. Let me let me get to the Pokemon Center. Ooh, this guy might actually have Pursuit, but I think that at level 15 we'll probably be able to resist it. Or maybe not. Fuck. Ah. Well, so much for. Training him up. We can always get another Magikarp later, but... Honestly, that was really exhausting. What the fuck?! If that had killed him, I would have fucking been livid. Come on. Ah. <sighs> All right. Looks like Weepin' Bell is back in the party. At least for now. I could go and catch another Magikarp at, like, another city where I can freely... Uh, fish one, but... Honestly, I'm not really up to it. I've also, I've used Magikarp and Gyarados too many times on too many of these runs. Time for something a little bit different. You know? You know. All right. Let's just, just skedaddle into Morty's gym and see what's up. Really, this gym battle is going to be won between these three Pokemon, although Apple Jacks will definitely come in useful in case we need to paralyze our opponents. Mm. 
Yes, I definitely can. Level 16? This low? Well, thanks for giving me so many ghastlies to grind on. It's too bad that these guys give out special attack EVs, because I definitely don't need anything boosting my special attack right now. But it's okay. is going on. Here we go. Slightly more substantial ghosts than some of the guys we were dealing with last time. Again, emphasis on the slightly part of what I just said. Man, no, like, I know the whole deal with Morty is that he doesn't have, um, he doesn't have any, like, uh, Mistrevises, which is, like, the one new ghost Pokemon that was introduced in Gen 2. I understand that, but... Okay, so you have to remember where the path is. I see, I see, I see, I get it now. Not the most creative gym, if I gotta be totally honest. I get it now, okay. But it, it, yeah, it's surprising that none of these trainers so far have a Miss Travis of their own. It's just exclusively Ghastlies and Haunters, Gen 1 Ghost Pokemon that were already very familiar with by this point in time. I think I got this. There we go. Ooh, this th this gym would be way more interesting and challenging if it remained permanently shrouded in darkness after fighting them. IMO. Mm. I understand why maybe they decided not to do that because they figured that would just get kind of annoying, but. I think it could have been pretty fun. You know what I'm thinking? Just to be extra on the cautious side, I think we should get good old Crobat to level 27 before we take on this gym. In fact, you know what? I'm going to exclusively, just to make my life easier, I'm just going to exclusively focus on Special K and Count Chocula. The other team members, y'all can rest easy. And you, you probably would do fine anyways if I sent you in to battle this gym leader, because his Pokemon are probably not going to be very strong to begin with. Man, isn't it great to not have to divide your experience points among yourself and a Magikarp anymore?
Hey, it's everyone's favorite Pokemon, Whoopa. I think that's it for all the trainers on this route. That being said, there are obviously still some Pokemon I can fight in the grass, like Magnemite. Ah, uh, really? All right, level 26, which means we got to get ourselves just one more level higher, and we will be nice and frosty. Nice. I know this particular route we're in right now has a lot of the similar Pokemon to the previous route. Wow, I think it's almost exactly the same. That sucks. Um, but I figure there might be just like a slight increase in terms of the overall levels that we're dealing with here, so maybe it'll be worth it. Sorry, no time for phone calls right now. Here we go. Probably two more and we'll be level 27. In fact, while we're here... Special K, how, how close are you to leveling up? Not that bad, actually. Not that bad. I wonder if we should just get him to level 27 as well. Ah, really? That must be a really defensively oriented Raticate. 
here we go. Air cutter. Uh, I don't remember. Is that... I think that one's a special oriented move. No, we're not going to bother with it. Sorry. Here we go. Maybe we can beat it even though we're paralyzed right now. And there goes Meowth. Okay, for a second, for a real close second there, I thought that So Silver was about to crash, but we're okay. Oh, look, look at how cute Quilava chases after me. Look at the little cutie. Oh. Shit, I was like, what is going on with that intro music? It's Raikou. Well, this is pretty cool. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be, even be able to capture him if we could, because... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Can he attack back? Okay. Okay. I, I was like... he He's not fleeing immediately. He's letting me attack. Is he about to attack back? But no. He was just fleeing. All right. What's up, Meowth? Uh, what's up, Meowth? Uh, That's a perfect rendition of that song. Nobody can copy it. You're stealers, thieves if you attempt to copy it. And that really didn't do a lot of damage. There we go. Goodbye, Miltank. Wow, look at all that experience points. I should probably start heading back, actually. There we go. This should probably do it. Actually, maybe not. I think I may need to go for one more Pokemon before I can take on Morty. Here we go. This is going to do it. And here we go. Three more levels and we'll actually be able to evolve into a Typhlosion, but we don't really need that extra added raw strength for the upcoming battle ahead, so I think we're going to be A-OK. -okay. Oh man, they're doing a, a season two of Don't Toy With Me, Miss Negatoro? Ooh. Well, it already started. They have three episodes going. Perfect.
I'm wondering, do I want to start with Crobat? Or do I want to maybe start with Quilava? Hmm. You know what? I should at the very least. I can see that my um, fellow Pokemon have some useful items. I should probably give some of these items to the Pokemon that are actually going to be participating in this battle. I'm going to actually, I'm going to give the Quick Claw to Quilava because I feel like he might have a little bit more difficulty outspeeding his opponents. Mm. And for Count Chocula, let's see, I have the Shell Bell or the Miracle Seed. Well, no real, <laughs> not, a, not much uh, decision to be made there. I'm going to give him the Shell Bell. And there we go. Of course, they do have some potions as a backup as well, but I don't think I might even need them. Here we go. It took me a real long time to realize that he's called Morty because it's a pun unlike Mortician, or like Maw, which just means like death. Uh, let's go with Flame Wheel. Uh, Ghastly and his evolutions, Haunter and Gengar, have um, weak special defense and very weak normal defense, and so it's more worthwhile for me to use Flame Wheel, which is a physically oriented move. Oh, here we go, Gengar. You know what? Because I'm concerned about making sure that I can outspeed him, I'm going to send out Crobat for this dude. Oh, he actually has four Pokemon. Interesting. Interesting. I did not know that he had four Pokemon. All right. Here we go. Two, two levels higher, so not a huge differential, but I think I'll be able to make it work. And of course, this has a chance of making him flinch, which is always nice. He's healing himself slightly, but not enough to resist another fight. Okay, can't can't escape now. That's not great, but I am still faster than him, and he's probably not going to heal himself with a potion, which means that I think I got this KO. There we go. Now here's the question: His fourth Pokemon that I didn't account for is it another Haunter? Is it another Mistrevis? Or is it another Gengar? I'm assuming that I can't. Oh, in interesting. I thought. I guess, I guess Mean Look only lasted as long as the, the Pokemon that cast Mean Look was in effect, is my assumption. Here we go. Ah. Uh, let's just see if I can take care of him while he's... Ooh. Meter. That's not good. And that actually is like pretty decently powerful when he uses it. So, you know what? Let's switch back out to Count Chocula. There we go. Goodbye. Alright. Who is the final ghost? Oh, another Haunter. Okay. I thought it might have been another Gengar, but I guess not. This one's a little bit more powerful, though. Wow, that was quite the beatdown. I feel a little bit bad if I, if I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> it's it's possible because all you ghost type gym leaders have one gimmick, which is your normal type moves can't hurt us. Well, guess what? I have way more moves than normal type moves up my sleeve. That's neat. We got both Surf and Shadow Ball out of this. Actually, we haven't taught any of the Pokemon in our party how to use Surf yet, right? We should probably look into that.
I also wonder if there's anybody in our party that we might want to consider teaching Shadow Ball to. Shadow Ball is now a specially oriented move, so the Pokemon that can really use it effectively are limited, but we'll see. Yeah, it's only it's only Muselix and Count Chocula, and they can't really use it well, so I guess that's that. All right, Surf, let's go. Oh, I wonder, can Nido Queen learn this? Or Nidorina? Wow, nobody in my party can learn it. Hmm. Hmm. Come to think of it, we, we've passed on many op an opportunity to get, like, a pretty decently powerful, like, water-type Pokémon. We have uh, Magikarp, but obviously he got killed. Um, I'm pretty certain... Uh, either Rattata or Raticate will learn Surf, so we could always use them, but it would be better if we could just get, like, a wild... another wild water Pokémon to take care of things for us. You know what? Let me look up something real quick. There are multiple rods in this game. We only have the old rod, which only allows us to get Magikarps. What about the good rod? Because I bet we can get some interesting Pokémon with them good rod, or at the very least, a very high-level Magikarp that we can evolve into a Gyarados. <sighs> Let's see here. Uh, apparently we have to go back to Olivine City. We can get it from a dude called the Fishing Guru. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get that, uh, good rod. In retrospect, maybe we shouldn't have wasted our one Pokemon catching opportunity on getting that one Magikarp. I'll, I'll, I'll switch out to Need Arena so that she can take care of this one, just because we're pretty close to leveling up. Ah, uh, come on. Just give us this one. Ugh. Come on! Come on! I didn't even level up last time. Well, let's correct that. Actually, you know what? I, I feel a little bit crappy doing this, but we should probably teach <laughs> Stantler how to use strength. In fact, we could probably teach Neat Arena how to use strength as well. Actually, that might be the better call because Neat Arena only has Fury Swipes right now, which is a pretty weak sauce move. Um, hold on a sec. We've literally not taught strength to any of the Pokemon in our party, so I figure we might as well fix this. Thunder, Strength, Poison Sting, and Double Kick. That is a... When you really think about it, that's a pretty eclectic collection of moves. All right, we are in Olivine City, which means that we need to find this fishing guru. Uh, I, I really thought for a second with his big, voiceful personality that he would be the fishing guru, but he was not. He was not. Maybe he'll be in here. Or maybe not. Hmm. 
I mean, I do I do like the the world building going on here of like just showing you the the daily lives of these sailors that have been out to sea for a while. I like the idea that like, you know, it's just a day in the life of these people, not particularly concerned with Pokemon or anything. This guy seems like he is the actual fishing guru. Here we go. Perfect. And I think I know just where to use it. Oh, you know what? Something I could also do. Something I could also do is I could also... Uh, uh, you know what? N nah, it's okay. I was going to propose. What I could do is I could teach Surf to like my Raticate and then surf around and catch a Tentacool and then use that as my surfing Pokemon, but... I mean, I'll probably end up inadvertently catching a Tentacool just surfing around normally, so no reason to make things any more complicated for me. All right. Uh, who do I want to... Here we go. Applejacks is up front. Here we go. Who's it gonna be? Oh! Krabby! Uh, hmm. I like Krabby a lot. We've never, I, I can't recall us using him on any of our prior runs. Here's what I'll say. Krabby and Kingler, not necessarily the best users of Surf, when you consider that they're much more physically oriented Pokemon. Uh, but it is still, like, I was really hopeful that we would get something dramatically different from Magikarp, and I mean, Krabby certainly is that, so I can't really complain. <laughs> Alright, I think Krabby is weakened enough. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can catch this fellow. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Kingler, his base attack stat is 130. Nothing to sneeze at, but his base special attack stat is 50. Oh, here we go. The naming time. The naming time's upon us. All right, let's see here. What do we want to call Krabby and Kingler? I'm certain that someone at some point has made, like, like, crab-flavored cereal on, like, a bet. Um, I'm just trying to think. What's a, what's a good name? What's a good name for, like, a Krabby Pokemon? I was about to say tricks, but I feel like that's better for like a rabbity Pokemon, if you know what I mean. You know what? You know what? I think I'm going to call this guy. I'm going to call this guy Shreddies. I know that's maybe maybe that would be a better name for like a Pokemon that has like pincers, for example. But I think I think it fits. I think it's appropriate. And like last time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to box Weepin' Bell so that I can make room for Krabby, because I think that we don't need two Grass-type Pokémon on our team, and I would rather use the Gen 2 Grass Pokémon than the Gen 1 Grass Pokémon. I guess at the end, when we get to the end of the game, and we, all we have left to do is, you know, battle the Elite Four, and we can just fly everywhere. I guess, I bet I can probably, like, remove Surf from Krabby and, like, switch it up with another type, type of move that he'll better benefit from knowing. 
All right. Uh, he has the ability Shell Armor. I want to say... Is that the ability... I want to say that that's the ability that prevents him from getting uh, hit with any critical moves. Careful nature, which means weaken special attack and increase special defense. That's actually a good nature for a Krabby. Problem is, is that it's like, uh, yeah, pr protected against critical hits. It's not great for us teaching him how to use Surf, but oh well. Again, we just need to use Surf to cross all manner of gaps, and we can teach him Crab Hammer when he eventually learns it as like his premier uh, attacking move. Let's see, while we're here, what are some other moves that we could teach him? Yeah, probably not any of these moves. Probably not any of these moves. Actually, he probably could learn Rock Tomb. So let's see if we can teach him that. He is able to learn Rock Tomb. In fact, he's the only Pokemon on our party that can learn it right now. So let's go ahead and let's teach him it. Krabby already has very good defense, so I don't think I need to bother with him still having a move that will further raise his defense. Look at this guy. He, I, I'm checking his stats out on Bulbapedia. He has 105 base attack. Jesus, holy moly. All right, and I just want to check real quick. Of course, I've talked a lot about Crab Hammer. Interesting. So it seems like he only learns it at level 41. So quite a bit from here. He'll probably have evolved into a Kingler by that point. So it's a bit of a moot point. Um, we should go and we should check out the lighthouse because the last time around we peeped in here for a second and then we skedaddled out. We should give it another shot. See just how strong these trainers are. Um, let's see here. Oh, I should probably... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give Applejacks the Shell Bell again. Ooh, Noctowl. Uh, not a great Pokemon for Applejacks to face off against, so I'm gonna actually switch back out to Special K. You know what, maybe I should just go for the raw strength of Flame Wheel, even if it is neutered by Knocked Owl having Reflect Up. I mean, yeah, I guess so. You kind of you kind of put a lot of damage on my Pokemon, though. Way more than I was hoping you would. Uh, let's see here. There we go. This guy will definitely have a, a water Pokemon or two that I'll be able to do a little bit more damage to. I feel like we've been fighting Pokemon that are in their teens for a while now. I, I complained about that earlier, but a lot of Pokemon in this gen way weaker than you expect them to be.
Excuse me. Ah, come on. He is paralyzed, though, so maybe we'll be able to get the jump on him still. There we go. There we go. Good job, Apple Jacks. This guy has bird Pokemon, doesn't he? Okay. Okay. Let's see. He could actually... Shreddies could actually potentially hold his own. Let's send him out. No, that's not great. Not a great start. Considering that Rock Tomb is already a not very accurate move, but there you go. Didn't need to do that. Oh, and now Pidgey's sending me out. Well, I could probably pull off a Thunder if I'm actually lucky enough. There we go. Come on. Come on! Come on! Yeah, there we go! There we go! This guy has a lot of flying Pokémon. I want to send out next. I guess I'll just keep... I, I, I want to see... I want to try to level up and evolve as many of the Pokemon on my team as possible during this stream. Let's see if I can get Applejack's level 27. Oh. Another Pokemon that I should not be battling right up front. This keeps happening. All right. Shreddies, go for it. That right there speaks to the sheer raw power of Krabby. I should probably level him up a little bit in, like, the grass somewhere after this. Uh, what do we want to use with this Growlithe? Let's use Muselix.
All right. Who needs a bit of healing? You do. How am I supposed to get to the other side? This is confusing. Just barely. Just barely got it. Hey, we got Swagger, though. Kind of, kind of a situationally useful move in double battles, but probably not going to use it on this run. How do we get over there? I guess, is there like another way that we can go up? Oh, there's the elevator. Interesting. It's Jasmine hanging out with her Ampharos, which she's definitely not known for using. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. oh so I have to approach from the ladder below? Wait, so how am I supposed to get up here? Well, this is certainly a mystery we're going to have to figure out. It's not... Is it at all possible that we have to, like, go up the ladder backwards? That's not a thing, right? No. I'm trying to see if there's maybe, like, a hidden passageway there. That doesn't seem to be the case. And I can't... Oh! I was not certain that I'd be able to get out that way, but lo and behold, that was the key. Man, that is very unsafe. I just want to let everybody know that is profoundly unsafe. All right, here we go. actually probably not going to do that much damage when you consider that Krabby has pretty good defense.
goodbye to Krabby number two. That's a nice little experience yield from that. Yay! There we go. <laughs> well, I should have realized that was another bird dude. <sighs> This is another opportunity for me to use Krabby, so let's do that. Fiero. I feel like Shreddies might actually have a bit of difficulty taking him on, so I'm gonna send out I'm gonna send out special K for this one. I could have actually probably done this with um Stantler, but I think we're gonna be okay. That's a good Fiero sprite, by the way. Good job. Alright. Now here's the thing. This gym leader that we're about to speak to, she's actually, I think, the sixth gym leader in the game. I actually don't think it's very worthwhile for us to battle her right now. I think it actually makes more sense for us to battle the fighting type gym leader instead. So after we gain access to her gym, I think it would actually be more worthwhile for us to... Or, you know what, we could at the very least just enter into her gym and just see how strong some of her Pokémon are. I honestly don't remember, like... The, the, the Fighting-type gym leader of the Johto region is, like, one of the least memorable of, like, any of the gym leaders. I always forget him. So no, another one of those doofuses that exclusively uses Fighting-type Pokémon that were introduced in Gen 1. Were there any, like, fighting-type Pokémon that were introduced in Gen 2? Hold on. Let's look this up. I'm looking it up right now, yet yeah. only two fighting type Pokemon were introduced in Gen 2, Tyrogue and Hitmontop. Now, I don't think Tyrogue is going to make an appearance. Under no circumstance would Tyrogue make an appearance in the fighting type gym, considering that I don't even think he learns any fighting type moves. I think he literally just learns normal type moves. Hitmontop, I could see Hitmontop making an appearance, but I just feel like the, the, the track record of these gyms so far has not been to use a lot of interesting new Pokémon that were introduced to this generation. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. Ooh, but what should we get rid of? Fuck, because Leech Seed is like a really useful move, but... Do I want to get rid of Synthesis, even? Is it possible that I want to get rid of Synthesis? That might... Ooh, because I don't want to get rid of Stun Spore. I don't want to get rid of Bullet Seed just yet. You know what? Call me crazy, but I'm actually going to get rid of Synthesis, just because I don't, I've not actually been using it all that much, and I feel like the passive healing of Leech Seed will actually be more useful in the long run. You know what? I'm not into it, Cameron, the photographer. After we meet up with... Jasmine at the top. I'm gonna go right into tonight's snacks and colacion segment. It'll be the 
cherry on top of the fruitcake, a reward for managing to get to the very tip top. Probably use headbutt a little bit more, actually. And goodbye to Machop number two. Maybe he'll have a. Oh no, a Poliwhirl. Okay. All right, if this guy has hypnosis, at least I'll be able to heal myself while I'm asleep. That actually, you know what? Swapping out Synthesis for Leech Seed ended up being the right decision. That was the right call. And there we go, Super Rebel time. Okay, so now we can we can return here a little bit more easily once we get that potion. Okay, I, I honestly like this is you know this is my first time playing through these games. I was not familiar with the methodology by which you finally would gain access to the Jasmine Gym Battle. Uh, Cyan Wood. Okay, we'll have to keep that in the back of our pocket. And with that, let's go ahead and let's jump right into tonight's snacks and collation segment. Ugh. Greetings and salutations, uh, friends of the World Wide Web of all sorts of international flavorful snacks. It's your boy Alexander Kazina here with another snacks and collation segment uh, today. We're going to be trying out something a little bit more on the sweet side. I feel like a lot of these snacks that we have here on Snacks and Classion, they lean very heavily into more of the savory side of things, the salty side of things. It's not often that we eat something sweet, uh, especially, you know, in the aftermath of the Christmas season when I'm still trying to, you know, lose a little bit of weight and eat a little bit healthier. Uh, and I found a way to do so today to both eat healthy and have a little bit of sweetness in our life. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from French uh, company Matin, I found uh, Intense et Compote. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is applesauce, not specifically of apples, however, uh, of what appears to be chestnuts and pears. Uh, indeed, it's um, its name is Poire, which means pear, uh, and then Touche de Chateng, which means a touch of chestnut, which sounds pretty exciting. I like chestnuts quite a bit. I don't really eat them raw all that much, but I'll definitely enjoy their flavor and other things. I mean, let's be honest here. Your boy loves a good bit of Nutella. Actually, that's hazelnuts. My bad. All right. As you can see, you have some fun little illustrations on the back here telling you about mom and the kid and Pear and his friends. Uh, chez Mater, nous marions des délicieux morceaux de poire au goût intense, which means that uh, at Matern, uh, we marry delicious pieces of pear with an intense taste. Uh, sans sucre ajouté, which means that no added sugar was put in this particular convection. Um, uh, avec une subtile uh, de châtaigne pour encore plus de plaisir, which means with a little hint of 
uh, chestnut for a little bit of pleasure. Uh, import. So one pot of these is uh, equal to impulsion de fruit naturellement source de fibre. So one of these things, it's like we're eating ourselves a nice big fruit. Uh, let's go ahead and let's dig right into this. I'm actually assuming that this is actually really good. I'm actually looking forward to packing one of these into my lunch tomorrow. Might even pack two, depending on how good they are. I gotta say, it's actually a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. I, I guess I'm just used to like much bigger fruit cups on average living in America. Not in America, but you know, like North America. I feel like across both Canada and the United States, we're into like big portions of fruit cups. Uh, as usual, let's do the patented uh, bouquet. Hmm, that's uh, I'm actually kind of surprised by how much of a scent this thing was. I was expecting to not get much of a scent out of it at all, but that was, um, yeah, you can really smell the, the pear and even a little bit of the chestnut too, which I was not expecting. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's dig in. Um, this is the spoon I was previously using to scoop up some of my, um, uh, corn, uh, when I ate dinner a little bit earlier on stream, but I think that it's cleaned enough that it probably won't interfere with the taste of this too much. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do like a half size spoon just to start things off. It smells really good. Hmm. Okay. 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 Hmm. 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 Interesting. This is this is an interesting convection, I gotta say. Uh, first things first, this thing is chunky. There are actual real pieces of pear inside this that you can actually chew up as you scarf it down. That is not something I was expecting. I feel like with a lot of these other fruit sauces I eat, I expect them to be fully like emulsified, very liquidy. This is actually not nearly as cohesive of a mixture. The other thing is that the um, uh, the chestnut, uh, kind of like little hint of chestnut flavoring in this thing, it's not really present throughout most of the entirety of the duration of the fruit inside your mouth, but it it does manage to sneak up at the very end there. And I don't know if I love it or not. I feel like it might be a little bit too much on the intense side. Let's have ourselves another another spoonful. I like the taste of the pear, though. It's a good, talk about like a good meaty little pear. This is a, and it's it's not overly sweet too, which makes sense because it's not supposed to contain any artificial uh, additional added sweeteners. You know what? I'm actually quite, I, I quite appreciate the mouthfeel of having those little chunks of pear inside this thing in addition to, like, the more smooth pear sauce. Hmm. 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 What do I want to score this? What do I want to score this? You know what? In the end, the, the, the hazelnut, hazelnut sauce part of it ended up not being that big of a deal. Still think it could have maybe struck a little bit of a better balance, but didn't detract too much from the overall experience. Uh, the chunkiness of the pear, which initially I was not down with, ended up kind of being a secret delight of that particular snack. And so you know what? I'm going to give this thing a solid eight. I didn't think it was utterly amazing, but I think it, it impressed me in unexpected ways more than it disappointed me. And for that reason, it's getting an 8.0. All right, let's go ahead and let's return to the stream. Uh, we should probably make a point of, first off, let's just check out on our map real quick. This is Cyan Wood City, okay. This is where, is this, I'm trying to figure out, is this where you, potentially will catch ice Pokemon, or is it... Like, I'm trying to figure out, because we got four more gyms left to go. We got the Fighting Gym, we got the Dragon Gym, uh, we got the Steel Gym, uh, and we got the Ice Gym. And it seems like 
all four of these northern cities have a gym to speak of. Oh, wait, hold on a second. One, two. Oh, no, no, wait, hold on. We, we, we previously dealt with this one over here. Okay, so it's like, we know that this one is a steel one. Cyan wood. What's the cyan wood, Jim? Now, this one, Mahogany Town. I think... I think this is actually... I think Mahogany Town is the fighting gym. And I think Blackthorn City is... I think this is the dragon gym. I think that's what's going on. You know what, though? Let's let's continue on the path that we're currently on. Let's go ahead and let's get that potion for good old Jasmine. I think she'll appreciate it. Even if we're slightly fighting the gems out of order, this still feels right. Uh, did we speak to this dude? All right. Very helpful. This is actually, you know what, this is a... I think it's worthwhile for us to go this route, because it seems like we're going to have to fight a lot of water Pokémon and a lot of water Pokémon sporting trainers that will be easy fodder for my Applejacks, maybe. Ooh, here we go. That was... I thought that was going to be a little bit harder, but it was not. In just a little bit, right now we can't catch any new Pokémon because we already caught our one Krabby earlier, but in a little bit the route will change, and when it does we can actually catch ourselves a Tentacool in case we want to have a, a Tentacool on our team in place of a Krabby. That might actually be... in fact, that might actually be more useful than having a Krabby, at least right now, because Tentacool can actually really take advantage of the sheer raw power that Surf provides. But it's one of those things where, like, yeah, in the immediate uh, future, Tentacool and Tentacruel will be more powerful, but, like, in the long run, Krabby and Kingler will be more powerful, and it's up to us to decide what we want to go with. There we go. Just a little bit more, and we'll actually be at level 46, and then... One more level, and we will be evolution time. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, there we go. We do have a, a rare candy that we could actually use to immediately evolve it if we wanted to, but we have enough trainers around here that are gonna make things easy for us. So let's just let's just use what, what the game is naturally providing for us. You know, actually using Applejacks to fight Shelders might not be great, considering that Shelders do have access to some Ice-type moves, so maybe I should switch out to someone else. Uh, 
I gotta say, I like I like Shelder's sprite in this game a lot. It's real good. In general, I'm a huge fan of Shelter. I think Shelter and Cloyster are both top-tier Pokémon. All right, seems like we're well on track to evolution. Ah, I was trying to trying to battle her. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to issue a correction. I've just been scrolling through the list of fighting type Pokemon I pulled up earlier. We forgot about a fighting type Pokemon that was introduced in Gen 2. A, a fighting type Pokemon that I'm actually a huge fan of. I have a holographic Pokemon card of this particular Pokemon that I'm very fond of. A uh, Heracross. Heracross was introduced in Gen 2, and yeah, it, unfortunately he's... um not like primary fighting type he's secondary fighting type he's bug fighting and yeah sorry that i forgot about that hey there we go apple jacks is now level 27 shelter oh you know what very berry can probably take care of it with its thunder Yeah. Welcome to the club, Applejacks. Interesting. So I'm looking right now. It seems like uh, if I want to get a Moonstone to evolve Neat Arena, I'm actually going to need to return to the Ruins of Alf. Again, this seems like something I should maybe do for when, after I get the ability to just fly everywhere. All right. Look at you. Look at you, Apple Jacks. All right. Uh, who do we want to put at the front of the party? Let's, let's give Shreddies a, a chance to prove his worth a little bit more. We are going to get ourselves a, another Water-type Pokémon in just a bit, so... Oh, I should have used uh, Mud Shot. My bad. Actually, hold on. Mud Shot, that's a special move. Not a worthwhile use of my time. I should probably switch out someone else after this, actually. I know that he is a Fire-type Pokémon, but he can't do that much damage.
All right, here we go, Route 41, where we can finally capture for ourselves, uh, assumedly, a tentacle. Okay, I was really concerned for a second there that was going to be a uh, critical hit, but thankfully it did not happen. It did not happen. Let's see here. What do we want to call this dude? What do we want to call this dude? We've had to name a lot of Pokemon on this stream so far. Hmm. I don't know why, but... Oh, you know what we could call this guy? Could call him Cap'n Crunch. Let's call... Let's call her Cap'n Crunch. You know what? I think I need to... Yeah, I need to get rid of the apostrophe. There we go. Everything just fits. I think, I think Shreddies will have a bit more of a, a sporting chance with this one. Shit. Alright. Come on, Shreddies. You can do it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Ooh, and we got ourselves a nice new move out of it. With slightly better accuracy than Rock Tomb. If I learn the, um... Oh, no, wait a minute. This this gen doesn't have Waterfall as a TM, right? Uh, that's too bad. Damn it. Come on. Ah, uh, damn. I was really hoping I could just continue my streak, but clearly that is not going to happen. Remoraid, uh, I'll keep very, very at the front for now. Oh, I forgot that Remoraid could even use that. Let's use Thunder, switch things up a little bit. Ooh, bite. Uh, I guess... 
I guess po yeah, I think I should probably just forget Poison Sing. <laughs> e even as a non-stab move, Bite just does that much more damage, and it's, like, better from, you know, like a... Uh, what am I trying to say? From, like, a type coverage perspective. Oh, not good. I gotta say, Very Very is really pulling its weight. I thought that by this point it would be feel a little bit outmoded by some of the other Pokemon around it, but, like, that Thunder alone, that was a master stroke teaching it how to use Thunder. It's surprisingly accurate, despite technically only having 70% accuracy. Look at that! Level 24 already! What did I want to use? What did I want to use? There we go. Of course, we, we have quite a bit of money saved up now, so it's probably not so difficult for us to buy some more when we need to. All right. Maybe I should give Muselix a bit more of a chance to level up. Let's bring him to the front of the party. There we go. we go. Not bad at all. This is actually a pretty good route to train a, a, our Pokemon with, actually. Not just against the trainers, but even the wild tentacles, oddly enough, are actually, like, strong enough at this point that they're actually worth battling. Ooh, if this Goldeen had Horn Drilled, that could actually do a dent in us, but thankfully it does not. I will keep old moves because Takedown is a Poison Chalice. It seems strong, but it's not that great. Oh, are we already here? Terra Firma? Yes, we are. Oh, is it possible... Is it possible that this is the Fighting-type gym? Yeah, this is it. It's the Fighting-type gym leader. Okay, that makes more sense, because I really distinctly remembered, yeah, the, the sixth gym leader in the game is the Steel-type gym leader. This makes perfect sense now. Thing we have some strong Pokemon at the very least that could potentially put a nice dent in this uh, fighting type gym leader's run. Uh, let's, let's chat with some people. Okay, so this is the pharmacy that we're going to get the potion from. Well, yeah, you, you gotta love the good old days of Pokemon when a, like, super powerful potion was just called the Secret Potion. No spaces.
Hold on a sec. This guy is giving us his Pokemon. What? Hold on. I'm going to make a little bit of a switcheroo. I know that I said earlier that, like, long-term... Uh, Kingler might be the more worthwhile Pokemon, but right now I feel like, considering that we're going to be going up against a fighting type gym leader, it would be more worthwhile to have Tentacool in the party, considering he is part poison type. Oh, but also, hold on, we got to make sure that we can get that other Pokemon that that dude has. Uh, you know what? Sattler probably won't get a lot out of this considering that he is normal type. This is why my one Pokemon for Cyanwood City, so I can't fish for anything else. What is it? Shuckle! Uh, okay. Okay, you know what? I don't think I'm going to use Shuckle, but, like, I, I appreciate getting a Shuckle. Why not? It actually, you know what? It kind of makes sense that we would get Shuckle in this city when you consider that this is the city that we got the secret potion inside of, and Shuckle is known for making potions using the berries that it ferments inside of its shell. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna deposit Shuckle into the PC box, but you know what? I appreciated. I appreciated gaining access to good old Shuckle. You know what? Shuckle is a Pokemon that I don't feel like I show enough appreciation for. I think Shuckle is a real cool dude. So yeah, these are people that exist to kind of explain what's going on with good old Lugia over in the islands that are surrounded by the whirlpools. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So this is how we're going to gain access to fly. Perfecto. And so many photographers in this game. It's Suicune. We'll, we'll deal with Suicune a bit later. This is the... that's the gym leader, right? I guess I might as well battle some other trainers while I'm here, just to see where they're at. In fact, I'm actually... I'm gonna put Special K at the front of the party. Because he's only a few levels away from himself evolving. Might as well get that taken care of. Oh, level 27. These guys are actually no joke, so I should maybe be a little bit careful. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to swap out just to be super ultra hyper cautious. And send in Count Chocula. Yeah, you know what? I think I should... I, I think that that right there is a, a sign from God that I should be careful about immediately running into this gym. I think that gym could give me a real hard-ass time if I'm not careful. Maybe I should actually advance the Safari Zone and see if I can get some cool Pokemon over there that could potentially make my chances of winning against this dude a little bit easier.
No, no reason for him to still have Constrict. So I'll... I mean, at the same time, like, having both Surf and Bubble Beam is a little bit redundant, but makes better sense than to still have Constrict. See what's going on in here. Okay, cool. I appreciated your little story. Oh, what's this? Oh, can we not access the... We can't access the Safari Zone yet. Is this only going to be finished after the after the Elite Four is beaten? Is that what we have to look forward to? Might as well chat with Suiku and see what's going on with it. Okay, I actually was not aware that we were going to be battling this dude. I don't even know what Pokemon he has. Okay. Well, again, now that he's seated, I can potentially recover a bit of health while I'm out of commission. I figured he might use that, but again, I should be okay because I am recovering health in return. There we go. Perfect. Electrode. That seems like a special K Pokemon. Oh, he could have Explosion, though. This isn't good. You know what? I'm gonna use... Yeah, I'm gonna use Flame Leo once. Oh, and I burned him. Interesting. Um, I'm still gonna switch out, though. I'm gonna switch out to Muselix. You know what? Between Intimidate and him getting burned, I think he's been weakened enough that even if he did do a self-destruct, I don't know that he, he'd even necessarily be able to kill me. Jesus, what the fuck is up with those thunders? Come on. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. What the fuck is going on? Thank God it didn't do, didn't attack me on that instance. Um, I'm gonna go ahead while I have the opportunity to do so, and I'm gonna use a super potion on Special K. Okay. I'm gonna use a hyper potion on myself now. Man, this, this Electrode was a real menace, even without any self-destructing moves. Well, easy finish to this battle. Uh, I'll try and see if I can do it with Special K. Yeah, I think Special K is due for an evolution stat.
I wonder if it actually might be worthwhile for me to head back into the gym. Because at the very least, if... If Quilava isn't all that great at... Taking out some of those fighting-type Pokémon at first, I could always swap it out for someone else. In fact, you know what I could do? Actually, scratch that. You know what I'm gonna do? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna level up Quilava to level 29. And then... I'm gonna use my one rare candy that I have on hand to evolve it. Oh, suck. I don't even need to bother with the trainer. I can just do it out here. If a Pokemon will show up any day now. Here we go. Oh, I mean, you know, didn't even have the right Pokemon at the front of my party. Might as well. Here we go. And goodbye to Tentacool. We leveled up to level 29. And now, we can use our rare candy to get our starter to his final form. So early on. Is this the first rare candy we've gotten? Oh no! That wasn't it! Damn it! I thought that was it! I thought we were gonna... Well, we still have some time left. I guess we can devote the rest of the stream to trying to level him up all the way to 30... I, I guess it's 32? I know that in this gen, they evolve a little bit earlier than expected. If it's not 36, it's definitely not 35. It's definitely not 33 or 31, so it's gotta be 32 or 34. I don't want that. We're switching out. Come on. There we go. Oh, shit. I was wondering when we were going to encounter one of these dudes. Uh, who do we want to send out for him? You know what? I wonder... Well, let's give... Oh fuck, I should have used Very Berry because he has an elect she has an electric type move. That's my bad. And there we go. Great Gyarados. Alright. There we go. Ooh, Tentacruel. He's only level 16, so I think I can take him. Whoa, there we go. That was fast.
It is kind of incredible that I'm spending so much time grinding this fire Pokemon up on this primarily water Pokemon route, but that's where we're at. Do I want to teach it Swift? I never use Leer. Might as well. At least we'll have like a special, a special any physically oriented normal type move. And also that has like a bit of tech because it can of course, strike an opponent that has been, um, you know, uh, using, like, evasion-boosting moves, like, um, Double Team, for example. Mm. Also, it's stronger than, um... Uh, you know what, this might actually give me some issues. I'm gonna use one Swift, and then I'm gonna switch out. Or I'll just tread that needle real tight. Let's go ahead and let's heal up before we forget to do so. I believe that with Tentacles it actually still makes sense for us to use Quick Attack because Tentacool and his evolution have higher special defense, which means that Swift won't actually be as effective. This is a swift scenario, if I ever saw one. There we go. Well, look at that. We're just about to hit 11 p.m. and we are almost literally about to evolve. This is amazing timing. I'm sorry, sir, but you can't prevent me from swifting you. Alright, now is it going to be 32? Let's find out. No! Well, fuck, let's keep going. We gotta evolve this guy before the end of the stream. I mean, if it's not 32, it can't be 35. I, I don't think there's ever been a 35 Pokemon, a, 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 po a starter Pokemon that has evolved at level 35 in the entire history of the series. It's not 36, because again, I know that it's, it's a, a little earlier than that. It's got to be 33 or 34. Money's on 34. Let's use Swift. Maybe that'll be a bit better. Oh, that did more damage than anticipated. Oh, maybe I should have swapped, swipped out, switched out to someone else, actually. Or maybe I'll be okay. We'll see. Oh no, fuck. I definitely am in a little bit of a hurry and not thinking very rationally right now, as you can see. Well, that still worked out, but we really, we really were pushing things there. I'm going to... I'll give him another, I'll give him another super potion. Why not? But I'm gonna go all the way back to, uh, not Cyanwood City, but the, um, the city that Jasmine is from.
Alright, let's do a quick little healing up at the Pokemon Center. We can do this. If we if we just push hard and fast enough, I think we can make, get over the hump and evolve him. I never talked with any of the... Um, people in this Pokemon Center, and so I figure I might as well just chat with them, because, you know, you never know if they're going to give you a really helpful TM or item or whatever. Uh, for a second, I was like, oh, did we not already battle this trainer? But that doesn't seem to be the case. I think we have. Think, at least. Goodbye to Tentacool. Oh, I was mistaken. Turns out we have not been by here. Ooh, I think we can do some real damage with Swift, because Shelter and Cloyster, not known for having great special defense. There we go. There we go, 33, so it's either at this level or it's going to be one more level. Why do these Pokémon keep using Constrict? You gave them one of the weakest moves in the game and they can't stop using it. There we go. Nice little experience, po uh, experience point gain. It seems like we've battled these trainers already. Okay, so I think that's all the trainers in this route. High level Tentacruel. You know what? I'm gonna actually swap this guy out for. D -d -d -d. Let's go with Very Berry. Very Berry has been making good work using its thunder. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. Wow, that did not do a lot of damage. That it, I was not expecting that. I thought that was going to do way more damage. Ah, uh, come on. Come on. Oh my fucking god. Three times in a row. Oh my, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, can I not escape now that I'm wrapped? No, I can't. Fuck. There we go. Despite everything, Need Arena is still making good work. I'm very proud of it. And I'm very proud of myself, once again, for teaching it Thunder. Although, I m if I come across the Thunderbolt TM, I might teach it that instead. Turns out we did not battle this trainer yet. 
<laughs> this C route is really labyrinthian in, in ways that I feel like are not typical of a lot of other C routes in other Pokemon games. Kind of ironic to use a move in which you shoot stars at a Pokemon that is literally a star. Uh, Starmie might be a trouble, actually, so I'm gonna switch this out for someone else. You know what? Very Barry, I think, might be able to handle this. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. You can do this. All right. There we go. There we go. This is probably going to be it, unless I'm, again, mistaken and it's actually level 36. Oh my god, really? Really? It's level 36 after all? Hold on a sec, let me let me just look up while we just surf around a little bit more and spend the final minute or so of our stream uh, leveling up a little bit more. Let's see what the deal is with the other Gen 2 starter Pokemon. Okay, so... I was... Let me put it this way. I'm... I, my insistence that... Uh, Quilava would evolve into Typhlosion at level 30 was totally justified on the basis that for Alligator, the final version of Totodile, the water st starter Pokémon of this generation, evolves from Croconaut at level 30. And Meganium? the final evolutionary form of Chikorita, the grass-type starter Pokémon of this generation, evolves from Bayleaf at level 32. Yet somehow, Typhlosion evolves from Quilava at level 36. I don't know why... Why would they do that? Like, I, 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 I could understand being like, hey, in this generation, all the starter Pokémon evolve at, like, slightly different levels. Uh... They, they all uniformly evolve at different levels compared to previous generations. So, like, for example, they all evolve at level 32 or level 34. Why have it be this one evolves at level 30, this one evolves at level 32, this one evolves at level 36? Like, were they trying to do this thing where it's like, well, the starter, the fire starter Pokemon has to be like, like, how to put this? It has to evolve at like a slightly later level to kind of represent that you like put that much more effort in it to get it to evolve is that what's going on you know what you know what our Quilava is quite a bit leveled up by now let's put it to test at the fighting type gym and let's see if we can actually get it over that hump i know we're going a little bit over time here but i really want to see typhlosion rear his head by the end of this stream i feel like i Oh, to you, the viewers, uh, to show his fiery mane. <laughs> Plus, like, I don't really want to go back to the city that Jasmine is in without Fly. <laughs> we should just get this over with. Now he's actually, earlier when he was at level 27, it was like not that much of a differential from the levels these guys were at. Now he's basically 10 levels higher. 
That is so funny. And goodbye to Machoke. So I'm assuming that we need what we need to do is we basically need to stop that waterfall so that he'll notice my presence, right? Oh, interesting, interesting choice of move. I guess he was trying to paralyze me, but I don't know why you'd go with that. Yeah, he's just he's just showing off at this point. Better to just use a fighting type move, my man. You know, he's so close to level 35, I'm gonna level him up against the tentacles to get him over that hump. And then I'll use him at level 35 for whoever is next. I almost feel like I'm, like, surfing on, um, what is it? Like I'm surfing on that one area near, um, what was it? That, like... It's like that section in the Kanto region where you can catch Missing No if you surf on this one specific area that's right up against the ground of that one town. Yeah, I'm definitely going to want to switch special K out right now, unless I want to really tread the needle, which I definitely don't. Oh, fuck! That was very close. Ooh, here we go. Lava Plume. Finally, a nice upgrade over Ember. 80 damage. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Man, I thought I was so determined, so convinced it was going to evolve at level 30. I should not have wasted that rare candy like that. Here we go. All right, let's show off that lava plume. Oh, that's a little bit... That animation for lava plume is a little bit different than how I expected it to look. Amazing that this dude actually got an evolution after all this time. Good job on Primate. Alright, looks like that wasn't quite enough to get my Quilava over the hump. So I should probably do just a tiny little bit more training before I head into here and then we can take him on.
gotta say, this is actually a very high level tentacle for this route. It is too bad that we got a tentacle that was only level 20 when we could have gone potentially all the way up to 25. Did we explore this section of the route yet? I don't... Oh yeah, we did. This is how we originally came into it. Right. And goodbye to Tentacle. Alright, here we go. Two more tentacles, and we will be up and at him when it comes to the evolution game. Mm. Here we go. I'm really curious what fighting type, like... Like, what the signature fighting type move is that this guy is going to be using. Because we already found the TM for Drain Punch, which we've yet to teach to any Pokémon on our team. Could, is it possible it might be Focus Punch? No, I'm not going to put it past him, but that was also the, 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 like... That was the signature TM of Brawly in Generation 3. I'm just going to switch out to someone else for this one. There we go. Ah, uh, you gotta be kidding me. This is why I switched out. Come on. There we go. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Typhlo. Oh, I already like his sprite. Ooh, I, I love that the little animation that his sprite does when he's jumping around. It's a good-ass animation. All right. We didn't c come this far to do nothing, so let's go ahead, let's heal up our team, and let's take on this shitty-ass fighting-type gym leader. I actually don't know about that. He might actually kick my ass in return. That would be a really... Dramatic, unexpected ending to this stream. I finally, I spent so much time training up my Pokemon and he just kicks all our asses. I do think he might have a Poliwrath, so we are going to have to play that a little bit carefully. Oh man, I can almost, like, feel the sensation that his skin must be feeling, having now released, having, with the Waterfall's force having now been released from him. Ch 
Chuck. I didn't, I didn't even remember this, that this guy's name was Chuck. Like, I feel like if he had cornered me and asked me ahead of this run, like, so what are all the names of all the gym leaders in this region? I would have been able to tell you most of them. Chuck wouldn't have been able to tell you that one. Primate, that's very, very tricky of you. However, I have just the move to counter your trickiness. No, oh, this isn't good, actually. Okay, there we go. I was concerned it might miss and that might create issues for us, but we're okay. Polyrath, here we go. Now, Polyrath, here's the thing. Polyrath definitely has a water-type move. He definitely has a fighting-type move. Does he have an ice-type move? I'm concerned that he might, which is why I'm actually going to send Count Chocula in. Wait, he only has two Pokemon? Oh, okay. Well, fuck. Here we go. Let's let's give a, a little bit of hacks on our side. There we go. Come on. Okay, he's gonna heal himself with a berry. He has surf. Okay. I think I can do one more wing attack and I'll be okay. But he might heal himself with a potion if he gets hurt again. Okay, he's probably going to heal himself with a potion. I'm going to use another wing attack and then I'm going to switch out to uh, Jump Bluff if he's still alive. Oh! Okay, thought he would use a potion. He did not. Goodbye to Polyrath. That was a short, furious little battle. Chuck, I don't love you a whole lot. I'll probably forget that you're called Chuck right after this, but... You know what? That was fun. Oh, what's this? Oh, so it is. Focus punch. Huh, okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. Now that I think about it, now that I think about it, the the um, signature TM move that Brawly had in Generation 2 was actually, it was actually bulk up. I forgot about that. Perfect. All right. Well, I couldn't have picked a better way to end tonight's stream. That really... I know there was a little bit of grinding at the end there that I know not everyone is going to love, but I feel like it it ended in a good place, even if you didn't love the road to get there. Thank you to everybody for tuning into tonight's stream. Remember, as always, that you can watch these streams live on Twitch every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST and as VODs on YouTube every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 30 p.m. EST. And of course, you can also find me on Twitter at Alex Cozina if the tweets and the twits are more your speed. Till next time, I'm Alexander Cozina, aka Cozy Bear, and I hope that you all have a good night.